my name is Megan Barner and I am a health and wellness coach and physical therapist who works with individuals with POTS and chronic fatigue, helping them rebuild their energy so that they can thrive again in their lives. I am very passionate about helping this group of individuals as I myself have both of these conditions along with a connective tissue disorder called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome that I have been navigating over the last decade plus and am able to say that bit by bit, I was able to rebuild my energy and get back to doing what I love, helping others get back to doing what they want to do in their lives through having more energy. So before I share today's video, I want to remind you that the information that I share is not to take the place of medical advice, and it is important to ask your care team before implementing any of the suggestions that I share. If you're interested in working with me and my becoming part of a member of your care team, I'll be sharing some information on that towards the end of the video. So the topic for today's video is a popular one, how to manage POTS fatigue. I have gotten asked, how can I be less tired? How can I have more energy? By just about every client I have worked with and those questions have also come to mind quite frequently in my own journey with POTS and chronic fatigue and Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. As having fatigue or feeling tired or exhausted really affects your quality of life day to day. It's actually one of the most common symptoms reported of those with POTS, followed by dizziness, presyncope, or feeling like you're going to pass out with certain associated symptoms, and palpitations. So that said, you're not alone if you feel tired and you have POTS. So why do you have so much fatigue with POTS? It roots back to what's going on with your nervous system through changes that have happened related to POTS or other prolonged stressors. We get shifted more into a fight or flight state. Some refer to this as a persistent sympathetic activated state where our heart rate goes up, we have more adrenaline and cortisol being pumped out into our system, shifting us into overdrive and leading to exhaustion if we stay there long term. I use the analogy for clients that if you were to ask someone to run and keep their heart rate at a certain percentage of their heart rate maximum, let's say it's 150 beats per minute, for a significant portion of the day, they would become tired. And if you have POTS or some other conditions where your autonomic nervous system is shifting you into that higher heart rate zone more frequently during the day, you are feeling like you're running that race. There's another state that our body can also shift into with chronic illness, notably with POTS, that is described as more so of a freeze state that's like an energy shutdown where the level of stress that our body is under is overwhelming us and signaling us to just slow down and stop moving. I found myself there quite a few times in my journey with POTS where I felt like I was a lead balloon just lying on my sofa for a significant portion of the day or in bed. And both of these have roots back to the state that our nervous system has shifted in and how it is responding to the stressors both internally and externally. And like I've mentioned in the past, there is a certain tolerance window, or you could almost say like a thermostat setting that our body is able to regulate itself in. And when we shift into that hyper aroused sympathetic state long term, or our body shifts into that hypoaroused shutdown or freeze state long term, it can move us into a higher level of fatigue. So hopefully that gave you some insight into why you're feeling so fatigued. There's some other pieces that hopefully some of the tips for managing fatigue will bring to mind as I share them. First of all, rest is helpful for managing fatigue. However, if you are staying in bed or horizontal the majority of the day, your body is going to have difficulty adapting to gravity when you are upright and your level of conditioning can decrease the more inactive you are. It feels like a two-edged sword when you're dealing with POTS and chronic fatigue. 
and finding that sweet spot of rest is important. For the average individual, that seven to nine hours of sleep is very important and really following whatever your particular circadian rhythm is very much rooted in not feeling as tired during the day. If you start sleeping a lot during the day and staying up all night long, that can really increase the fatigue I've observed both in my journey and in the clients that I have worked with. I've had a couple people tell me recently, and I'd say I actually agree with it now that I've gotten on the other end of getting back to having a bit more energy, that naps worsen their fatigue. And this is where it goes back to when you are napping, you become horizontal and your body gets into a certain state with the blood distribution. And when you sit back up, it's having to readjust. And if you're having trouble with postural changes, that can shoot your heart rate back up and lead to more fatigue. It also leads to more deconditioning. And if you're in that shutdown state, sometimes can feel like it's pulling you down more into it. That is my personal observations there, but there are things you can do to help shift your fatigue other than rest. That brings me to the next point, figuring out ways to integrate what I like to call constructive rest. I am referring to specific practices that help shift your nervous system into a recovery state or regulated state where you're within that set point where you have more energy and you're able to respond and adapt to the different stressors that are around you. Constructive rest practices, I like to call resilience practices, bounce back to a higher energy level, can at times be even better than a nap. I've mentioned a couple of these before in my other videos, but to reframe how you think about them, when you're feeling fatigued, it can be helpful to draw upon things like mindfulness of the state that your body is in, blending that with meditation or visualization, especially bringing to mind something that is regenerative for you, that brings feelings of gratitude, joy, love, appreciation, or an accomplishment, can actually shift the state that your nervous system is hanging out in, whether it be in that shutdown state or in that hyper aroused state. I love to pair all of those with breathing especially a nice even inflow and outflow of your breath. Just focusing on your breath and how your body is breathing, feeling the breath enter and exit can be a mindful practice in and of itself and can help you visualize that energy or that regenerative emotion that you're trying to bring back into yourself when you're feeling shut down and tired. Breath can have this powerful effect. If eating rate stimulates your cardiovascular system and gives your nervous system the best boost to rebuild your energy. Another example of constructive rest that I actually move between labeling it as either exercise or rest is mindful movement. That is movement that you are doing that is pacing with your breath to help shift your nervous system back into a more regulated state. I actually shared a gentle movement flow for POTS in another video on this channel that I'll link below this video if you are curious about what I am talking about. This takes a nice transition into the fact that daily movement can actually lower, depending upon your approach to it, your fatigue levels. Sounds a little bit counterintuitive if you're already feeling tired to move, but when we move, we improve our circulation throughout our body. And when we are having more blood pooling, that can contribute to our level of fatigue. And movement can also send signals to help with regulation of our heart rate, regulation of our nervous system, and shifting us out of that either shutdown state or out of that hyper aroused, persistent sympathetic state that we may find ourselves in. The key is matching the movement to the state that your body is in and the state of your nervous system and also keeping in mind the level of physical conditioning that you're at. If you are currently able to go for a walk and feel okay afterwards, it's figuring out the length of the walk and maybe adding in intervals with the walk 
or adding in less inclined, more inclined to help you regulate your heart rate. But if you're on the other end of the journey where I found myself quite a few times in the past, where just getting up and sitting up at the table for an hour is fatiguing, adding more movements that are lying down or seated may be more your speed. And having someone such as myself, a health coach and a PT that is knowledgeable about nervous system regulation, very helpful to figure out a particular movement sequence that gives you the ability to recover and improve your energy and your fatigue. It takes skill of understanding what's going on inside of your body or that interoceptive sense of what signals your body is sending you and understanding how well you're recovering. And I've mentioned that in another video, I can link POTS and heart rate variability by looking at your HRV trends along with your heart rate trends day to day and over a couple days into the future if what you're doing is matching your body's ability to recover from it and understanding what state your nervous system is in. There are movements that can bring your body back into regulation, like I mentioned the mindful movements, but there are other types of exercise that can include strengthening and aerobic activity that can help you regulate your nervous system and your improve your cardiac conditioning and all in all, improve your fatigue level day to day. Another piece that I actually have a video on too is allocating your energy for your priorities day to day. That is one of the biggest pieces that I struggled with, especially when I was initially diagnosed with POTS and trying to continue in the career as a physical therapist but deciding what I wanted to use my energy for based upon what I needed to get done in a day. There are particular things that if you wrote down what your main priorities each day, can typically wait until the next day. Because if you try to fit in too many things, your energy battery will drain pretty quickly and you'll get to the end of the day negative on energy and see that as repercussions in the days to follow. So, I like to keep a short little list. I keep a, a four by six index card on my dresser where I get ready every morning so that I'm reminded these are my top priorities every day. And one of them is to get intentional rest and to integrate some of those constructive rest practices that I personally have found the most helpful to rebuild my energy and resilience. So take a moment to just step back and think about that if you haven't before. So a phrase that's used in the world of PT is energy conservation techniques, and that is what energy allocation can come under. But the piece that I really like to delve into quite a bit with both coaching and PT clients are those values and priorities and keeping them right there to remind you, like what I mentioned with the index card. And last but definitely not least, there is the aspect of managing your stress. Stress can fatigue just about anyone if it's there long term, but when your body is already trying to regulate itself and has some challenges with the different states that your nervous system shifts into, when you layer on extra stress and you get shifted into more of a hyper aroused sympathetic state, or if you're in that shutdown free state and already overwhelmed with stress, additional stress can pull you down further and further, draining your energy. It can be something as simple as the emotions that are affecting you day to day, the schedule that you're keeping. It may be in the area of diet and fluid intake. I talk about that quite a bit in my videos, but that can affect how your nervous system is responding if you're going into high alert where your body is not getting the food and water and electrolytes that it needs to balance. Or it might be other health conditions that you're dealing with that may be increasing your pain or inflammation levels, affecting how well you're able to get a good night's sleep. And working with your care team to figure those out can be tremendously helpful, both from my personal journey and in pairing with a variety of different clients in both the coaching hat and the PT hat that I wear. I hope that these tips were helpful in giving you some insights in how to manage your fatigue, living with POTS or chronic fatigue. 
And if you're interested in having more personalized guidance in how to improve your energy levels and live each day with less fatigue, I would be happy to talk with you. I offer a free 45 minute consultation for any potentially interested client. You can email me at megan.varner at guide to resilience.com or schedule a link on my calendar with the link below this video.